it's now October the 3rd already, the 19th Sunday after Pentecost on the church calendar. St. Anne's and St. John's continue to welcome you to online services of, excuse me, of morning prayer. The regularly scheduled services of Holy Eucharist in English are at both churches at 10 a.m. The Spanish Eucharist at St. Anne's begins at noon. You're welcome to worship indoors with us at either church on Sundays when we follow diocesan safe practices. <clears throat> Here on YouTube, we offer morning prayer every Sunday. Some of you are not able to come to church and others among you hesitate to gather indoors because we know the pandemic is not yet over. Our online service comes mainly from the Episcopal Church's Book of Common Prayer and the Church of England's Book Daily Prayer provides the canticles after the readings and the intercessions. Now please bring your joy and concern your intercessions for yourself, for others, and for the world in which we live as we gather to worship God this morning. For those of you using the, or having prayer books at home, the service begins on page 80. <clears throat> In the name of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Come, let us adore him. Psalm for this morning is Psalm 8. O Lord, our governor, how exalted is your name in all the world. Out of the mouths of infants and children, your majesty is praised above the heavens. You have set up a stronghold against your adversaries to quell the enemy and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the works of your fingers, the moon and the stars you have set in their courses, what is man that you should be mindful of him, the son of man that you should seek him out? You have made him but little lower than the angels. You adorn him with glory and honor. 
You give him mastery over the works of your hands. You put all things under his feet. All sheep and oxen, even the wild beasts of the field, the birds of the air, the fish of the sea, and whatsoever walks in the paths of the sea. O Lord, our governor, how exalted is your name in all the world. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Our first reading this morning is taken from chapter 2 of the book of Genesis, beginning at verse 18. The Lord God said, It's not good that the man should be alone. I will make him a helper as his partner. So out of the ground, God formed every animal of the field and every bird of the air and brought them to the man to see what he would call them. And whatever the man called every living creature, that was its name. The man named, gave names to all the cattle, the birds of the air, and to every animal of the field. But for the man there was not found a helper to be his partner. So the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept. Then God took one of his ribs and closed up the place with flesh, and the rib that the Lord God had taken from the man, he made into a woman and brought her to the man. Then the man said, This at last is bone of my bone, and flesh of my flesh. This one shall be called woman, for out of man this one was taken. Therefore, a man leaves his father and his mother and clings to his wife, and they become one flesh. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The canticle following that reading is a song of God's splendor. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the whole earth. Sing to the Lord and bless his name. Tell out his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations, his wonders among all people. Honor and majesty go before him. Power and splendor are in his sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord, you families of the people. Ascribe to the Lord honor and power. Ascribe to the Lord the honor due his name. Bring offerings and come into his courts. O worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let the whole earth tremble before him. Tell it out among the nations, the Lord is king. With righteousness he will judge the world and the people with his truth. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God now and forever. Amen. The second reading today is from the first chap from the first two chapters of the letter to the Hebrews. Long ago God spoke to our ancestors in many and various ways by the prophets. But in these last days he has spoken to us by a son whom he appointed heir of all things, through whom he also created the worlds. He is the reflection of God's glory and the exact imprint of God's very being. And he sustains all things by his powerful word. When he had made purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become as much superior to angels as the name he has inherited 
is more excellent than theirs. Now God did not subject the coming world about which we are speaking to angels, but someone has testified somewhere, what are human beings that you are mindful of them, or mortals that you care for them? You have made them for a little while lower than the angels. You have crowned them with glory and honor, subjecting all things under their feet. Now in subjecting all things to them, God left nothing outside their control. As it is, we do not yet see everything in subjection to them. But we do see Jesus, who for a little while was made lower than the angels, now crowned with glory and honor because of the suffering of death, so that by the grace of God he might test it, taste death for everyone. It was fitting that God, for whom and through him all things exist, in bringing many children to glory, should make the pioneer their of their salvation perfect through sufferings. For the one who sanctifies and those who are sanctified all have one Father. For this reason, Jesus is not ashamed to call them brothers and sisters, saying, I will proclaim your name to my brothers and sisters. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. Here ends the reading. A song of praise. You created all things, O God, and are worthy of our praise forever. You are worthy, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power. For you have created all things, and by your will they have their being. You are worthy, O Lamb, for you were slain, and by your blood you ransomed for God saints from every tribe and language and nation. You have made them to be a kingdom of, and priests, serving our God, and they will reign with you on earth. To the one who sits on the throne and to the Lamb be blessing and honor and glory and might forever and ever. Amen. You created all things, O God, and are worthy of our praise forever. The Gospel portion for this Sunday, the 19th Sunday after Pentecost, is from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 10, beginning at verse 2. Some Pharisees came and to test Jesus, they asked him, is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife? And he answered them, what did Moses command you? And they said, well, Moses allowed a man to write a certificate of dismissal and to divorce her. But Jesus said to them, because of your hardness of heart, he wrote this commandment for you. But from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no one separate. Later in the house, the disciples asked him again about this matter. Jesus said to them, Whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery against her, and if she divorces her husband and marries another, she commits adultery. People were bringing little children to him in order that he might touch them, and the disciples spoke sternly to them. But Jesus saw, when Jesus saw this, he was indignant and said to them, Let the children come unto me, do not stop them, for it is to such of these that the kingdom, kingdom of God belongs. Truly I tell you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will never enter it. And he took them up in his arms, laid his hands on them and blessed them. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
In the name of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Well, again, welcome, and again, this is the first Sunday of October, and we move into the autumnal weather, sometimes called Indian summer, and according to my farmer's almanac, the days around St. Luke, 18th of October, are known as St. Luke's summer. The last of these in many years come to the conclusion, at the conclusion of that long green season. In fact, outside as the trees turn and the fields brown. Just two months then, and we shall begin a new church year with the first Sunday of Advent. This year, this week's gospel portion finds Jesus in dialogue with the Pharisees on the topic of marriage and divorce. Is it lawful, is the question, to end a marriage? And Jesus responds in good rabbinic tradition by saying, what did Moses command? How do you read? Their answer is, Moses permitted us to write a notice of separation and so complete the divorce. Normally all the man had to say was the woman is that I divorce you, but the certificate brings it to completion. So according to Moses, it is valid to terminate a marriage. But Jesus has something more to say on this topic. He points out to the Pharisees that this permission to write a certificate of divorce was taking into account human hardness of heart. All of us know that marriages don't always work, that sometimes the relationship which began well falters and the relationship can in fact die. And so this permission that Moses gives seems to be within the normal flow of human behavior to be an appropriate response to a dead marriage. But Jesus says this is not God's intent that we should falter and fail, and that a marriage relationship should die. The basic covenant in marriage should not be as Jesus comes to the matter, so easily dissolved. Rather, marriage is understood, Jesus tells us indirectly, to be the start of a new community. A family was understood as the first foundation stone of a future reality. When the two become one flesh, God expected that the union of the two would endure and that it would be the answer to the singularity of Adam. It's not good that the man should be alone. He needs a helper, a partner. So by God's reckoning, God provides a response to that situation. In the record that we have from the Old Testament, the Creator intervenes, causes a deep sleep to come on Adam, and takes a rib from Adam's physical person and fashions it into another human being. Flesh of my flesh, bones of my bones, says Adam when he sees her. This is a partner, one who is equal, not subservient or not dominant, but an equal partner. And this woman in the Hebrew, Shah Isha, will have a joint share in managing the creation along with 
Adam. It comes to pass then that with the creation of Eve that a new community and new and common life is procured and begins. This is not patriarchy. This is not matriarchy. This is a life together based on continuing exchanges of care, forgiveness, trust, and mutual encouragement. And these are only four of the aspects of that life in, within that to be community. It is then, in the context of one flesh, that we begin to discover the many meanings of community. Paul, when he writes to the Corinthians in chapter 13, talks about love being the foundation under girding the relationship, a different kind of love, not friendship, not companionship, not erotic love, but self-giving, sacrificial love, each to the other. When I was growing up, I used to have lunch at my grandmother's every once in a while, and she would have the radio on, and there would be a program. I think it came from Chicago. It was called Queen for a Day. And on that program, they always identified and interviewed a couple who had been married at least 50 years, sometimes many more years than that. In any case, one of the questions that seemed always to be asked was, to what do you attribute the durability of your marriage? And very frequently the answer came back, well, it's always been a 50-50 proposition. As a mathematical explanation for how a marriage works, that's not true. It's always the male totally giving self to the woman, the woman always giving totally herself to the man. It's part of what the marriage bed represents the total giving of each to the other. And when beyond that, when Paul writes to the Galatians, he outlines some behaviors, attitudes, conducts that within the larger community are marks of the presence of God among them. Love, joy, peace, self-control, patience, kindness, faithfulness, gentleness. These are virtues. These are well-accepted behaviors. And against them, Paul tells us, there is no law to prevent them. So marriage, I think, is in large measure a community begun with two that may become many more. We knew in one community where we lived two families, each of which had more than 20 children. They were a community to themselves, and God bless them, I don't know how they managed. In any case, let us pray. Lord of all grace and mercy, prevent us from falling victim to hardness of heart. Renew us by your Holy Spirit that we may do your will in all things. And finally, Enable us to grow into the fullness of your purpose and grant that we may achieve your intent. We ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen.
Join me now in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them now and always. Day by day we bless you. We praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Lord, have mercy on us, Lord, have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy, for we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope, and we shall never hope in vain. The collect for the sun, this Sunday. Almighty and everlasting God, you are always more ready to hear than we to pray, and to give more than we either desire or deserve. Pour upon us the abundance of your mercy, forgiving us those things of which our conscience is afraid, and giving us those good things for which we are not worthy to ask, except through the merits and mediation of Jesus Christ our Savior, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. O God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you that the week to come may be spent in your favor. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
In peace, let us pray to Jesus, our Lord, who forever lives to make intercession for us. Savior of the world, be present in all places of suffering, violence, and pain, and bring us hope even in the darkest night. Inspire us to continue your work of reconciliation today. Lord of the Church, empower by your Spirit all Christian people, especially Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, Presiding Bishop of the Episcopal Church, Alan and Gail, our bishops, Ennis, our rector, Richard, Sarah, and Anne, our priests, Deacon Valerie, and all who minister among us in your name, and the work of your church in every land. Give us grace to proclaim the gospel joyfully in word and deed. Shepherd and guardian of our souls, guide and enable all who lead and serve this community and protect those on whom we depend for our daily needs. Grant that we may seek the peace and welfare of this place. Great Physician, stretch out your hand to bring comfort, wholeness, and peace to all whom we hold before you and all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Fill us with compassion that we may be channels of your healing love. Conqueror of death, remember for good those whom we love but see no longer. Help us to live this day in the sure and certain hope of your eternal victory. Let us commend ourselves and all for whom we pray to the mercy and protection of God. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I give to you, my own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church, and give us the peace and unity of that heavenly city, where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you are alive and reign, now and forever. Amen. The General Thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. A prayer of St. John Chrysostom. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of us. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and the age to come life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, and the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen.